Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to a new video. Today we're going to talk about Laravel Horizon, one of my favorite packages in the Laravel ecosystem, and you're going to see why I like it so much. Uh, like I say in every video, if you could leave a like, subscribe to the channel, maybe leave a comment, share this video with your friends, subscribe to the newsletter. That really, really helps me. As you know, this is free content and I'm not getting paid to do any of this. So any help is highly appreciated. But with no further ado, let's go into the video because I am really hyped to show you guys what Horizon does. All right, as you can see, we have pretty much the same code as the last video. I did remove the exception, so this should work, but we're not gonna do anything now. We're gonna go to GitHub Laravel Horizon. And as you can see, it gives you a brief introduction of what Horizon is. And Horizon is basically a dashboard and also a queue worker, if you will. Um, it's basically Laravel queues on steroids. It's really wonderful. Not only does it give you really good stats, it shows you queue workload, it shows you recent jobs, you can monitor jobs based on tags, but it's also such a breeze to scale using Horizon. So let's see how can we install it. We're gonna go to the documentation. And I always say, uh, like I love doing screencasts, but the documentation is always the, the best source of truth. It's usually the most up-to-date content, and Laravel's documentation specifically is really, really good. One thing about Horizon that you, you should keep an eye to is that it is Redis exclusive, so you need to use Redis. You cannot use it with SQS because it doesn't make sense, or with Sync, or with a database driver. It has to be Redis. So let's run the Composer require command, and then we also need to install its assets. So, whoops, sorry guys, I had a, a weird thing on my Composer JSON, I was testing something, Never mind. Um, now we need to run the install command and then it's installed, that's basically it. So, let's see what's interesting. The first thing is if you go to, let me close this, if you go to config, you're gonna see horizon file. And actually it's better to just show you horizon. Let's go into our app and we're gonna go to horizon. Okay, here you go. Um, you do need to set up authentication requirements on the Horizon service provider, but I'm sure that you can follow this through the documentation. Let's not have a video on it, but basically you have a gate to define whether a user is allowed to see Horizon. Since we are on development mode, we can just access it. Now you have this beautiful dashboard. It gives you all sorts of stats. You can see jobs per minute, jobs per hour, fail jobs, the status. So Horizon is not running. We don't have it active. Max wait time and max run time are really useful because it allows you to know how your queue is behaving. Do you have jumps that are taking too long or do you have queues that are flitted? That really helps. And total processes is how many workers you are ready. Now, remember that on the first video, I showed how to run multiple workers on the same queue. Horizon makes this such a breeze. In the Horizon configuration, if you scroll down a little bit, you're going to see the queue worker configuration, and you have a few. You, ha you can have different configurations based on environments. So what do we see here? We have supervisor one, which comes with Horizon and it's the default. So it's gonna be available for both, for all environments. And then you can change some things specifically in certain environments. So we're saying that this is the default for supervisor one. And on the projection environment, we want Supervisor 1 to have 10 max processes, but on local, we only want three max processes. So Horizon allows you to scale things in different ways. Like I said, you, you configure your queue workers on this file, which means that you don't have to run a queue work command multiple times. You only need to run the Horizon command. And Horizon itself is gonna take care of spinning up new workers or decreasing workers. And it also has some load balancing features. So let's say that, for instance, I worked on an SMS app and the amount of messages we had to send in a given time, uh, it varied a bit. Sometimes we needed to send a lot of messages. Sometimes we, we didn't need to send a bunch of messages. With Horizon, you can configure the number of processes. You can also, you can go static. You can say, hey, I want 10 workers on this queue and that's it. But you can also say, hey, I want the minimum of three workers on this queue and the max of 20. And if the system is not under load, you can decrease it. If you start to get some load, start to increase it. 
what's really interesting is you can also make this balance in between queues. So let's say you have an SMS sending queue and you have a queue that adds stuff to a list. What you can do is give a number of processes to both these queues and let Horizon balance them based on the load that you are receiving on your server. All right, for now, we're not gonna touch this. Let's go over this and just see how things work. One thing that you have to remember is you define which queues are being handled here. Like I said, you can have multiple queues using the same configuration, so they're gonna share resources and you have some balance options. This is all in the documentation. We're not gonna cover all of this on the video. Either way, let's do something. Let's add some jobs into the queue, okay? If we go to pending jobs, you can see all the jobs that you added. This is super cool. And if I click on one of them, you can see all the context. So we know this is a payload. We know that it is a message object. So it's this model class with this ID. We're not loading any relations using this connection. It's like I said, remember on the first video that I mentioned that Laravel automatically serializes models to something that it can understand and picks them up later. This is it. We can also see completed jobs. We don't have any, so nothing to see here. And we can see failed jobs. We have metrics and batches. We're not going to use batches now, but metrics is super interesting as is monitoring. So how do we activate Horizon? How do we make it process those jobs? Well, just so we don't make things way too fast, let's go into send message and let's just add a really small delay. So we can say um, microseconds. No, let's say, yeah, let's say one second because we're going to have three workers. If we go back, we can see that on local, we have three max processes. We can go here and say PHP artisan horizon. Horizon started. And now it's active, okay? And you can see that we have the default key. We have three processes running and the number of jobs is increasing. And we can actually make it auto refresh, which is super cool. So it gives you the max wait time, which is a minute. It calculates this based on how fast the jobs are being currently processed. And if we go into pending jobs, you can see all the pending jobs. If we go into completed jobs, you can also see all those jobs right here. Um, I'm going to halt this because I want to do something real quick. And it's actually taking two seconds. I think, yeah, I left it sleep here. That's okay. I'm going to start throwing an exception here. So throw a new exception. Let's rerun this and see what happens. So they started to fail. And if we go into fail jobs, we don't have any because they haven't failed for the amount of times they should. So let's remove the sleep so we can have things happen a little bit faster. And let's rerun this. Horizon is active once again. And it all failed. Oh, we forgot a DD right here. Okay, no problem. Let's rerun this. We have only a few pending jobs. So they all failed. And if we go to fail jobs, we start to see all the jobs that failed. And like I said, they only go into fair jobs once we reach the maximum amount of attempts. And Horizon showed this for us. You can see that we attempted it five times. We have the, the model, we have the IT. Um, it was pretty fast, so we don't have a, a good number here. But what's interesting is you can click on the job and see what went wrong, when it failed, and when it was pushed into the queue. So here's what's really cool. Let's stop this for a while. Let's go into our class and fix this. Let's get Horizon up once again. It is not going to process anything because I don't think we have any jobs into the queue. We do not. Oh, it seems like we do, apparently. Um, and what we can do is we can go into the fair jobs and let's say you have this running projection. So I'm assuming errors don't happen very often. You can go into your queue. You can click and say, okay, so this is this is what was wrong. You can fix it. You can go through the UI and you can resend it. So it's retried and it also says it's completed. So if we click on it, you go all the way back, recent retries, and it also gives you the idea of the job. So this is really, really, really cool, guys. Really great. Of course, on the dashboard, you also have a bunch of information, the amount of jobs per minute, 
you have the amount of jobs in the past hour. And this is all configurable through the config. So let's go here, config horizon. If you go all the way up under trimming times, you have, you want to keep recent jobs for 60 seconds, pending jobs for 60 seconds, completed jobs for 60 seconds, recent failed for seven days, failed for seven days and monitored for seven days. Now, what is a monitor job? If you go here, you can see that you can monitor a tag. And Horizon has this concept of tags. What does that mean? Let's go into our job and we're going to add a tags method, which returns an array. And we're going to say, for instance, we can say send message. And you can also say stuff like, for instance, message, and then add the message ID. Now we need to add a couple new jobs into the queue, right? So I'm going to add a few jobs. Okay, we have a hundred new jobs to be added into the queue. And I'm gonna monitor this tag. So send message is the tag I wanna monitor. Let's add it here. Do we have Horizon running? Um, we do. So let's add some jobs into the queue. We should have some pending jobs and Horizon is already processing them. So if you go into monitoring, we can see all of them. And Horizon is also going to show the tag. So we have the tag that we use to identify the job. And we can also add all sorts of tags. Um, in this case, I just added one mentioning which message model it is. But you can, you can do lots of things. You can also do dynamic stuff. I do this all the time. Sometimes, for instance, um, this wouldn't happen on this app, but let's say you have a method called is landline. You could say landline, say this message is landline. Obviously this method does not exist, but this is happening during runtime. So you have access to all the properties inside this class and you can do pretty much whatever you want. It's gonna be executed. You can maybe create the database. I wouldn't recommend it, but you can do all the kind of stuff. With that said, this already shows a lot of the power of Horizon. And the greatest thing, like I said, is scaling things. Just like with the queue worker, you can run Horizon multiple times. Obviously, you only want to have one Horizon command running per server. But you, what you can do, though, is you can have a single Redis server, so a central entity, and you can connect multiple servers to that Redis instance. And you can run Horizon in those servers and Horizon will automatically balance things out. So you're going to see a new server pop up on the Horizon dashboard and you're going to theoretically have double the processing power. I say theoretically because you also have things like a database which affects performance, external API calls, that kind of stuff. But the point is, if you want to scale Horizon horizontally, you just need to run Horizon once again, point into the same Redis server. Obviously, you want to do this in different servers but Horizon will automatically scale things for you. And it will also show you the different servers running because they also might have different configs. Unlikely, but it's possible. And Horizon shows all of that for you on its screen. Now, another thing to note is Horizon runs as a daemon. So it's a command that never finishes running, which means that if you change something in the Horizon config, you do need to rerun the command. So if you have a deploy script, make sure to kill Horizon and you can call, well, I can show this to you guys. We have Horizon running here on one tab, right? And I'm going to say PHP Artisan Horizon terminate. And the process was terminated. So you can use a scheduler, I don't know, something to keep this running as a daemon. So if it ever is scaled, you want to have it be retried, rerun. And then on your deploy script, you can just say Horizon Terminate and Horizon will gracefully shut down. All right, guys, this is the video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Horizon is very powerful. This, this video does not do its justice and you just have to play with it to understand how things work. But it is certainly a really great dashboard too. Not only that, but also a really great queue manager. And if you ever need to do some scaling, don't go for the fancy stuff first. Try Horizon first, try a lot of OQs. And if that doesn't work, which I doubt, then, you know, try something else. But Horizon works wonderfully. It's beautiful. Monitoring through Horizon is amazing. You can, there's a command that you can run to create snapshots so you can have metrics 
all that kind of stuff. So take a look at the documentation, play a little bit with it, and I really hope this video was helpful. As I said in the beginning, leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel, share it if you can, because it really, really helps me. But that's it. See you on the next video.